Hey guys, thanks for joining me, RJ, on this episode of Art Point Out. I'm very excited about the topic for this episode, so I am just going to get right into it. This is what's got me so excited. Inside, as you can see that it's called, is a comedy special. The latest to come from this guy, Bo Burnham. If you don't know Bo Burnham, that's a shame, because he is a great musician slash comedian who also happens to be one of the OG social media stars. When he first posted videos on YouTube, there was none of this start with TikTok, progress to Instagram, then hit YouTube if you've already become someone. There was no TikTok or Instagram when he started his internet career, which was in 2006. So his thing was to write songs and play them on the piano and sometimes guitar. Get girl if you're into rimming, it's only safe if you're swimming. And girl, don't sit on that couch because I treat my objects like women. I spit fire like I just blew a demon. My shit's so hot, I'll leave your toilet bowl steaming. I'm gonna the songs he sang were uh, goofy and inoffensively offensive things, if you know what I mean. But they got attention. Uh, a lot, actually. He was soon doing stage performances, uh, recording them, releasing albums. And he would go on to do his first Netflix special in 2013. The material in that first special, uh, which is called What, it maintained an element of that goofy charm, but he started to get introspective and conceptual. It was actually really good. This is a portion of a song called Left Brain, Right Brain, one of my favorites. Take the best parts of both of us, put them together. I'm listening. It would let you let your feelings out. It would let me analyze. So you could man the themes, I'll man the form. The material in his next Netflix special, which is called Make Happy from 2016, that material stayed conceptual and whatnot, but it also started to engage the world around him a bit more, as he discussed things like gender politics, social responsibility, etc. Starving Africans. I just hope I don't get more from this than you do. After Make Happy, Burnham took a hiatus from comedy for a few years. By 2020, he was ready to perform again, but of course at that point, the pandemic came around and threw a big old wrench into that plan. But rather than wait for things to get better, he decided to make a show that's largely about pandemic life, or the lack thereof. In Inside, Bo talks and sings about the challenge of making comedy in such dark times and asks if it's even appropriate for him to do so. Is comedy over? Should I leave you alone? Cause really who's gonna go for joking at a time like this? Should I be joking at a time like this? He also asks how appropriate it is for him specifically to make comedy. He talks about his degrading mental health, and also reckons with the fact that, once again, he seems to be a white guy occupying the spotlight, and he reflects on whether or not he should be. American white guys, we've had the floor for at least 400 years, so maybe I should just shut the fuck up. I'm bored. So even though he's being jokey about it, which is his job as a comedian, He's still asking a pretty serious question about social responsibility, and he's doing his best to give a very earnest answer. But this isn't a complete surprise. Bo's earlier Netflix specials were already placed at the intersection of stand-up routine, performance art, and TED Talk. But with Inside, I'd say that Bo pushes himself to a whole new level. He's saying exactly what he wants, and exactly the way he wants to, with all-time levels of confidence and skill. There's a lot I could say about the material, more than I could talk about in a single episode of Art.0. But that's okay, because I'm actually not here to discuss or critique comedy. I will take a close look at some of the material later on, but I'm interested in this special because of its form more than its content. Or at least, I'm interested in the content insofar as it relates to the form. What do I mean by that? The whole special is filmed and put together in such a way that is very, very reminiscent of social media content. I know that Netflix isn't actually a social media platform, per se, but other than that one small detail, Inside appears to be user-generated in every way. 
due to the whole COVID situation, the whole thing is done almost entirely by just the one guy, Bo, who uses homemade recording tactics to solve the very difficult logistical problem of producing a full 90 minute length special in the confines of one room. Some parts are actually very highly polished, like this segment. Times are changing and I'm getting old. Are you gonna hold me accountable? My bed is empty and I'm getting cold. Others are kind of low tech and simple, like here. When he orchestrates the entire light show for this song with nothing but a handheld flashlight and an impromptu set of house lights connected to a pedal board. Sometimes, he'll actually change the technical elements, like the format of the screen, to make this special look more like content. Here, he's going from landscape to portrait style to make this song look like something you'd see on your phone screen. Even though each of these pieces has a different finish, so to speak, what links every single one of them in terms of their overall format and style, is that they'd all look perfectly at home on YouTube. So why does it matter that Burnham has made these stylistic and technical choices? It's interesting that he seems to be synthesizing what we know as content and what we know as performance, but of course I'm interested in the implications of this. What is he saying about the broader paradigm of today's entertainment culture? I gotta step back here for a second. Content is something that many, many people subsist on, endlessly consuming without any real thought. And that's truer than ever these days. After almost a year and a half of lockdowns and stay-at-home orders, there's a lot of people who have probably run out of internet to scroll through. And it seems fair enough to say that what we consume makes us who we are. You know the old adage, we are what we eat. So if the content we consume is trash, then we become trashy. Sorry, but it's true. So Bo's piece, as self-proclaimed content, is here to fill the void and give us something to point our faces at, like all content. But look, I made you some content. Daddy made you your favorite open wide. Here comes the content. Except it's not the kind of content we can just point our faces at, is it? I would say that Bo's special is a kind of anti-content, or perhaps meta-content, and what it does is perform a very conceptual, but very apt critique of the quote-unquote point-your-face type of content. And it reflects on what the face-pointing, if I can call it that, type of content has done to an entire generation's culture and mindset. Check out this segment here. All human interaction, whether it be social, political, spiritual, sexual, or interpersonal, should be contained in the much more safe, much more real, interior digital space. That the outside world, the non-digital world, is merely a theatrical space in which one stages and records content for the much more real, much more vital digital space. By saying that the digital world has superseded the real one, Burnham is saying that culture is now a hyper-real experience, if anyone remembers that term from episode one. Anyway, then we have this segment, what I call the reaction video routine. This bit, in my opinion, is one of the most significant moments in the entire special, and here's why. So at this point, he is just reacting to a video we saw moments ago, and he gives a commentary on that video. On the second portion of this bit, he actually reacts to his reaction and he says that whole reaction was pretentious and it's actually a dumb video and has no greater meaning. I need everything that I write to have some deeper meaning or something weird, but it's a stupid song and uh, it doesn't really mean anything. He follows this up with the reaction to the reaction and he says, okay, when I criticize my reaction, that's actually a defense mechanism. Uh, I want to get the critique in there before other people do, and I think that if I'm self-aware about being a douchebag, his words, then it's actually okay. And I think that, oh, if I'm self-aware about being a douchebag, it, 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 it'll somehow make me less of a douchebag, but it, but it does not. Um, self-awareness does not absolve anybody of, of anything. Am I balding? So on each subsequent reaction video, Bo extends his level of self-awareness. 
But he ultimately concludes that self-awareness is not enough. But if self-awareness isn't enough, is it enough to have the awareness that awareness isn't enough? So, what's this got to do with content culture, as I call it, in general? Is Burnham saying that user-generated content, social media personalities, they can never atone for or overcome their own depravity and sincerity and deleterious sociocultural effects? Or is he saying that they can, but only if they go through the same ridiculously meta-process of awareness achievement? But who is Bo to prescribe a way for the internet to somehow better itself, if that indeed is what he's saying? To be honest, I'm not sure we can tell exactly what he's saying, but if nothing else, we can confidently say that Burnham makes us take a deep look at what constitutes our main form of entertainment these days, and how we engage it. Not everyone is completely sold on Inside. Richard Brody, a critic writing for The New Yorker, says that Bo, quote, displays finished products with no sense whatsoever of everything material and emotional that his life was made of while he was doing the work. I can't say I fully understand his reasoning behind that statement. I mean, Bo's material life was consumed by the logistical needs of the special, as we can clearly see through the conditions of his living and working space. And as for the emotional fabric of his life, well... I am... not... um... well. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe Brody thought this scene was too contrived, or maybe staged. The thought did cross my mind too, if I'm honest. But in any case, Brody the Critic Man does make one point that I very much agree with. He says, quote, Inside is an exemplary template, not only for the kind of movie that filmmakers and performers that could and should have been making while standard productions were shut down, but also for what can be done beyond pandemic times in the absence of a cinematic infrastructure that independent filmmakers can reliably access. End quote. Both Burnham and Brody have pointed out that good things can happen when traditional entertainment media borrow certain elements that are associated with user-generated media, and vice versa, for the exchange works both ways. With Rudy Mancuso, the guy from episode 2, if you remember, he's a personality who's airing content on YouTube, but makes said content with the financial backing of the studio, which entails high production value, craft catering services, probably, and all that other good stuff. And then you have stuff like Inside. This special takes the form of what we typically refer to as user-generated content, but it happens to be on a platform that hosts what we know as traditional entertainment. Movies, TV, live specials. Or it makes original content that is modeled after these traditional forms. Now, Burnham and Mancuso are just two artists, or one and a half artists, and they don't necessarily represent a greater trend. But I would not be at all surprised if the realms of content, performance, and general entertainment continue to collapse on and borrow from one another. When they do, many, many possibilities open up, vis-a-vis -vis our chance to really shake down and rebuild our basic understandings of pretty much everything. Act structure, cinematography, editing, set, locations, you name it. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the future. So anyway, uh, that's it for this uh, episode. Thanks for watching, blah blah blah, good to see you. Uh, it's been fun. I can't actually tell you what's gonna go on on the next episode because I haven't decided yet. Um, maybe I'll talk about a new wave of user-generated performance, cinema, and other forms of art that have, until now, belonged to stage, TV, movie theaters, or galleries. Uh, we'll see. But seriously, I will be back soon with a whole new exciting and very pertinent topic, and I do hope to see you then. Until then, I'm Arjun.